Hey guys, it's uh, Ryan Hyde 16, and I have a little bit of a different review today. It's going to be in video format, but I'm also going to rely on some previous photos and videos I've taken before. Um, but now what I'm going to review is the USRT Peacekeeper. So Scott Williams, uh, many of us know on the forums and Facebook and social media for a lot of the water methanol kits, um, has designed a kit for alternate cooling for our inner coolers and even our uh, external oil coolers or really any products that use um, kind of a radiator. Um, USRT Peacekeeper heat defense system um, basically is a all-in-one package with all the plumbing and nozzles and pump and tap to use your windshield washer fluid reservoir uh, in order to spray fluid on your intercooler or any radiator for that matter to cool it down over time um, from an evaporative standpoint. So as the system would trigger, and we'll go into that in detail, uh, the pump would kick on and would start spraying about anywhere from 75 to 100 PSI through as many nozzles as you want to place, place uh, in the car. And then that fluid transfer... Uh, would transfer to the intercooler or the radiator and would cool it down over time as air is rushing in over the surface of a wet intercooler or radiator. Um, unlike water methanol injection, the kit cools uh, the intercooler via evaporation from the outside to eliminate heat soak. Um, it's basically eliminating heat buildup over time um, due to the amount of time it takes to evaporate the liquid that's sprayed on the intercooler. Um, there are other products out there on the market, such as cryo kits or cryogenic kits. Um, they will typically use a CO2 canister that's mounted in the trunk, kind of like a nitrous bottle in a sense. And we'll run plumbing to the front of the car and we'll have a, um, usually a, a hard line oval shape, um, hard line kit, which will have holes in it or really nozzle orifices to spray CO2. And what that does is it almost freezes um, the surface or the front of an intercooler. And while that typically does work and cool down an intercooler, it's really cooling only during the period of time that you're on the button or it's triggered in order to spray the CO2 onto the intercooler. Usually once you're off the button or the CO2 has stopped spraying, the intercooler heat soak can really go back uh, up rather quickly. Uh, I know this because I've had this kit in the past on a previous car. And the idea now is to go with, uh, with something that's more of a liquid evaporative cooling option instead of a, a cryo kit. Um, <clears throat> uh, so really some of the, the, the more additional differences between cryo and um, this USRT Peacekeeper kit is that cooling effects of the evaporation should last longer uh, after spraying with the USRT Peacekeeper kit. Um, cryo... Also, something else to point out is, I believe, more restricted in road course racing. Um, I'm not really sure about drag racing or any other motorsport applications, but from what I've seen on the forums in the past, uh, it, it, I don't believe it was widely accepted through a lot of motorsports uh, activities, whereas this is a kit that uh, I don't think has really been called out and I don't think um, is an issue for any of your motorsports um, activities that you uh, use your car in. So, um, you know, basically other people say also, why not just use methanol? Why would you use a peacekeeper kit um, when you can just have a very large post intercooler methanol nozzle to cool the intake charge? That's true. Um, we do get into the realm of discussion with a cooling option for the intercooler um, and the effectiveness of a water methanol uh, jet or nozzle placed after the intercooler. Um, the idea here is to act as if the intercooler you have, even if it's an upgraded one, um, is larger or acts larger than what you actually have. So the idea is, you know, while under boost, air is compressed, that air heats up, and even while driving, every intercooler will eventually heat soak during normal use, especially during hard use or, you know, high boost runs or driving very aggressively. Um, over time, the intercooler will still uh, heat soak. And an intercooler functions really as a heat sink. 
And that heat soak over time reduces the intercooler's efficiency and can lower performance by increasing intake air temperatures, even a few degrees. Now, <clears throat> if you have water methanol, you're spraying whatever mix you're spraying between water and methanol, just methanol, just water, 50-50. I mean, there's, everybody uses different ratios and swears by uh, different mixtures. Even if you're using water methanol, this is a tool that can be used. It is an add-on to increase the efficiency of your intercooler and reduce the heat soak. Ultimately, if you're reducing the heat soak in an intercooler and cooling it down, the air that runs from your turbo, through your turbo outlet, through your intercooler inlet, across your intercooler core, out the other end for the intercooler outlet, it has been cooled somewhat by the use of this USRT Peacekeeper kit because it is spraying liquid on the intercooler and as the air is passing over it, the evaporative nature of that fluid transferring into gas will cool the intercooler core. Your air intake temps, even before water methanol, will be cooler. Thus, the theory is, the air after your water methanol injection will be even cooler than it was without using potentially this USRT Peacekeeper kit or um, being able to spray liquid on the intercooler core. Um, the idea here for the Peacekeeper is that it can eliminate the heat soak altogether, um, depending on the size of your intercooler, or just slow it down significantly enough where you're going to gain a few degrees back on the colder side for your air temperatures, and then the water methanol can act even more efficiently. The idea at the end of the day is to get the coldest air at the head of the engine, right, or through the throttle body, into the intake manifold, into the engine, into the cylinder. You want the coolest and densest air possible. This is a tool to do just that. Take it a step above, you know, just water methanol being used to cool down the intake charge. Um, <clears throat> The USRT Peacekeeper really is a full plumbing package. It's designed for distilled water in the summer. Um, it can use windshield washer fluid really all season. It can use it in the, the fall, into the winter, into the spring, anytime that there's still cold weather in areas that could freeze water. But the idea is just to use any fluid that can be sprayed on the intercooler. Um, the Peacekeeper kit, and I have a picture up here on my computer that I took previously, but I've already ripped through it and installed it but I'm going to show you some of the pictures along the way. In this box that comes from USRT, you get a small pump, very lightweight, um, a check valve, uh, which I also refer to as a quick disconnect, which I'll cover uh, in a little bit for when I remove the bumper, I'm able to actually disconnect the line or the hose from this check valve. So it's actually serves two purposes between a check valve and also quick disconnect for a bumper removal. Uh, high atomizing spray nozzles, which spray in a conical pattern, a ton of flexible hose for you to route inside your bumper, along your frame, um, you know, rebar, anywhere that you have um, a location to mount these nozzles. Uh, there's, there's plenty of hose that comes with a kit for you to be able to route it any which way and uh, get the nozzles where you want it. And then uh, it also comes with a tank tap fitting, which I'll go into basically a way to drill and tap your existing factory windshield washer fluid tank, install the tap, and then you instantly can connect that with a push lock fitting to the pump. Um, it also comes with ABS plastic strips and flexible holes holders, which I'll show you. Just um, some little pieces and bits that allow you to mount the nozzles uh, wherever you want. In terms of switch control, the pump really is an on off pump, positive negative wire, um, you can control it to you can control it with or install it with whatever controller you want. Uh, I've actually opted for the USRT Boost Trigger, uh, which is a boost trigger. But um, this is it, and that has come in. I'm in the process of installing this and working with uh, Chris Dollary at Double Apex to get a center mount console button made to switch this on or off, and then even override it for when I want to spray, potentially if I'm at a light or um, cruising around and I, I don't wanna rely on a boost setting to actually kick off the spray and uh, soak the intercooler to then cool it down. But you can control it with a simple boost trigger. That's what I'm gonna be doing here, again, with, a, with an override button. Um, you can also control it with something like a uh, Cortex electronic boost controller or one of your Torque Byte outputs. 
I wouldn't put it on a pulse width uh, or PWM torque byte output. I have all of my outputs in my torque byte CM5LT completely used up between aux injectors and a uh, pulse width um, direct port uh, water methanol uh, solenoid. And then I have my other outputs going for um, the low pressure fuel pump control and also the water methanol uh, pump itself. So what I opted to do is install a separate boost trigger uh, in order to control the system and, and when it sprays, um, when that button activates it or doesn't activate it or disengages it. And then there's actually gonna be another feature in the button that you can hold down and it will override and it will actually just go straight to the pump and turn it on for as long as I hold the button or a, a timed amount like 10 seconds or so. Um, one thing I do want to cover is the quality of the compression fittings. Um, historically, I've used compression fittings in the engine bay for all of my water methanol setups, whether it was a direct port or post intercooler. Uh, I've purchased every sort of high, kind of high quality water methanol specific push lock fitting. They have all failed on me. Um, whether, you know, typically plastic, they've all failed over time due to the extreme heat right at the uh, the engine or, you know, close to the, the engine block. So I was never a fan of them and I've always used compression fittings and I've never had a problem. Um, but in this case, looking at the compression fittings that have come with the USRT kit, they've actually changed my mind a little bit, um, which I'll get into. They are kind of a high quality plastic nozzle and then the push lock fittings actually have the metal barbs or fingers inside to hold the um the line in so you know so far so good no leaks the other thing is is that you know really these push lock fittings are not going to be subjected to high engine heat temperature like you would with a direct port methanol system um they're just they're you know they're in front of the the engine really within the bumper or by the crash bar and they're actually going to get a lot of air and cooling so i don't really see these failing over time um, but you know, that's kind of the historical, uh, aspect I've had on push lock fittings when it comes to engine bay, water methanol fittings, but for a system like this, they are very high quality push lock fittings. And I think they'll work just fine. I'm going to switch over to the next photo and in the kit, this is what it comes with. And again, forgive me for showing you photos, but I was pretty excited about this one and installed everything myself, uh, before this actual video review came up. So you have the pump, you have an inlet and an outlet, you have a simple two wire configuration with positive negative. The white tube in the middle is the compression fitting, which I'm also using as my quick disconnect when I remove, review my bumper. You have the high quality nozzles, um, all push lock. You have the tank tap fitting, and then above that you have all of the line holders, which have 3M double-sided tape. And then below that is the USRT boost trigger, which is what I'll be using to um, uh, run the system. And then up top under the USRT sticker, there is going to be the ABS plastic. The idea with this is the ABS plastic has 3M tape. You can use this to mount to any metal surface behind the bumper and then use the line holders with 3M tape to adhere to that 3M plastic. So Scott really thought about a way to get uh, the ability to mount these nozzle holders securely to metal surfaces by using the ABS plastic strip 3M tape and 3M tape on the nozzle holders. And then up at the top left corner is the line that, uh, that you would get. So the next photo, this is my bumper off and that is the pump installed. And then I drilled with a uni bit, being careful when you're going down on an angle, I drilled a hole there for the tap, which you can see on the ground in front of the um, fluid collection tank. So drilling that allows me to drain the fluid and then put the push lock fitting in. I actually took a video, so that's really just all the windshield washer fluid running out. <clears throat> just some additional photos. This is from the passenger side, side view near the tire, but this is how the pump is mounted. It's actually a perfect location right there. It fits very snugly there, and I felt secure with some heavy-duty uh, tie wraps and a uh, one screw through the bottom right foot on the pump. That pump is not going anywhere. As you can see, I have the push lock fitting in place in the factory uh, tank. Line runs up to the pump inlet 
And then on the right side, the pump outlet comes to the uh, check valve or the quick disconnect I'll be using when I remove the bumper. It's the front view. Just showing you what it looks like with the tank top in. That tank top is, is great. You just, you know, you, you drill the, the sides of the hole and you put the tank tap in and you give that, that nut on the top a few turns, you know, really by hand and maybe a half a turn by wrench. And, you know, it expands a rubber gasket at the bottom and really tightens up within the hole you drilled. And there is, you know, really no chance for, for a leak on this at all. <clears throat> My configuration. So... I recently installed an external oil cooler, which you can see on the right. And then I have the pack parts front mount intercooler that has been integrated into the crash bar. The idea here is to run the nozzles in the line within the bumper in order to direct them at the intercooler and even the oil cooler to spray them down again, based on whatever control you want. And so that's the surface area I'm trying to cover with the jets in the next few photos. There is a jet. I actually have an extra one right here, just to show. Okay, and so this is me figuring out a way to mount them to the bottom of my bumper to shoot straight up or spray straight up in the conical pattern. And then as soon as it sprays up and really the uh, first row of openings at the lower grill, the air will push that conical spray back into the lower uh, portion of the intercooler. There's another one with the line hooked up. This is again on the bottom of the bumper. This is at the top of the grill within the bumper. So this is going to satisfy the top of the intercooler. And then this is the configuration really all done. So what I chose to do was run three along the top and three along the bottom. And the bottom right corner one is a dead end. So uh, the kit comes also with a stopper that you can plug into one end of the uh, double ended nozzles and then stop the flow or really dead end it. And then the last jet I put in is actually on the driver's side fog light grill. I switched over from a GTI bumper to a replica European uh, Gulf R bumper only for the airflow to the intercooler. And now the airflow behind the fog light grill for the external oil cooler. So I was able to run a nozzle in this location as well in order to spray the oil cooler to cool that down as well. I figured, you know, it's another radiator. Why not get some fluid on it from time to time and cool it down? And that's another photo of it behind. And then this is kind of a full video that I took. So that's showing the line out and running up and over within the inside of the bumper. That would be to the first nozzle, second nozzle, third nozzle, all at the top, running over to the driver's side fog light, to the one nozzle for the external oil cooler, down around the shroud, and along the bottom. And there's the first nozzle at the bottom, second, and third with the dead end. So that's kind of the whole configuration at the bumper. And here is a quick video testing when connected to the pump and activating the pump at roughly about 90 PSI. And as you can see, they're kind of conical spray patterns. They're misting very well. A lot of fluid. Really don't need to be on this for too long. And I'm pressure testing at the same time. At that point, I had to turn up the set screw on the pump, which is very easy. And uh, I bottomed it out and eventually got up to the maximum pressure of about 90 PSI uh, running seven jets. So other than that, tips for install. Uh, re reminders that the pump is not pulse width modulated or PWM. It requires an on-off actuation for full pressure and best nozzle atomization. And again, you can use a controller like the Cor uh, Cortex EBC or um, the Torque Bite unit. <clears throat> and that's based on RPM and boost, or you can use a simple boost trigger or USRT's boost trigger, which is a really nice heavy duty quality unit, which I'm looking forward to installing. Uh, the check valve after the pump outlet can act as a quick disconnect for removing the bumper. You can disconnect this line or this hose right at that quick disconnect and then completely remove your bumper after you remove your fog light electrical connections. 
And then if possible, once you have all of the nozzles mounted and connected, test the pump pressure. So just run the ground from the wire to the chassis and then run a power wire over to the battery and just touch the positive on the battery and let the pump run. If you have uh, the ability to get a gauge, take the gauge and try to plug it in and see if you can get pump pressure as close as possible to 100 PSI. I think a good rule of thumb here is that if you're running six to seven nozzles, I think bottoming the screw out on the pump is the best way to go because it's going to ensure that you're going to get the highest pressure. I don't really think anyone's going to get over 100 PSI um, on this little pump with that many nozzles and running the distance of line that we're running. So, but it's just good to, uh, to test. And then really in terms of cabin noise, uh, while the pump is running, you barely hear it. It's quiet. It also depends on where you mount it and how you mount it. If you're able to mount it by all of the four rubber feet that are on, um, the, uh, the pump itself, it'll be less vibration, uh, for myself, the way I have it mounted strapped to the, um, OEM windshield washer fluid tank. Uh, I still don't really hear it inside. I'm definitely not really going to hear it when I'm driving the car or especially at high boost. So it's really not a concern for me um, at all. And then so aside from covering the parts and showing the install and the video of the spray pattern, I'm going to show you uh, a demo with the bumper on for soaking the intercooler shortly. But as I turn around, this is now with the bumper on. So just to show you how sleek it looks and how you really can't tell on the, this is on the driver's side, right? So go far fog light grill, that's an intercooler pipe. And then you can see the uh, external oil cooler from um, iBed Engineering, um, the SOMS kit. It's a Cetrab oil cooler. You can see right underneath there, the nozzle. And the way that nozzle lines up it looks like it's spraying at the front end of the oil cooler, but with the rush of air, it's going to push that fluid back along deeper into the oil cooler since it's on an angle. And then the lower grill, you have the pack parts uh, intercooler front mount, and you can't see the nozzles. Um, <clears throat> again, they are underneath in here, down in there, spraying up, and then as the air comes in, it's going to push it back into there. And then the top nozzles are sitting right behind here and are spraying in a conical pattern back this way. And then eventually when they spray, they will drip down and, uh, you know, cover the intercooler. And then on the other side, there's, there's nothing. So I'm going to try to shoot a demo right now of the spray pattern. All right. And here is a spray pattern. Hard to see, but it is misting a lot in there. You can see the spray pattern in there. It is misting a lot. And so I even installed some black lights in there with some UV dye to show you the cooling or the spray pattern effect that's coming in there. And it's not lighting up as well as I want it to, but it is really wetting down the intercooler. Now just imagine that at driving speed, air blasting on that wet surface of so the intercooler and potentially the external oil cooler or any other radiator you may run. The last thing I wanted to put together and show was really how the pump sits behind a GTI bumper or a Gulf R bumper on a, um, <clears throat> on the passenger side. So within here, it's really set back in there. I mean, you're, you're talking six inches back in there. You can see the pump all the way in the back there, the tank top, which is good and bad. It's exposed with this type of grill. The GTI obviously has the, um, Fog light in there, I don't think you're going to have any issue as the fog light housing really sits more back on this side. Back here, you're not going to have an issue on the GTI bumper. Um, on the Gulf R bumper, the good thing is you can see directly in there. So I can look 
and I can see if that tank top fitting is ever leaking. I could even probably get a wrench in there if I wanted to. I can see if my quick disconnect is leaking, um, any of the pump fittings, anything like that. I can take a look and see right through the grill. But as you stand back, you really don't see it. But as you come down onto ground level and you look kind of up and back, you can see everything in there. But for the most part, uh, I do have all the stuff exposed. I could put a um, the backing that came with the bumper on this to protect all that. It's really just open now for me to keep a monitor uh, on a lot of stuff that's in there, all the electronics and the uh, all of the tank tap fittings. So really, uh, at the end of the day, that is the USRT Peacekeeper heat defense kit. Uh, I'm excited to get out there. I will put some data up at some point. I'll run it with and without to see you know, how many degrees of cooling. Um, there's a great YouTube video out there for, from uh, Mighty Mods, which shows it on the dyno and shows when they uh, spray their intercooler, they do drop their IATs pretty substantially. I think it was, uh, I think even up to like 10 degrees from what I can recall, but you know, it's a great kit. It's, uh, you know, it's inexpensive from USRT. It's well put together. The fittings are very high quality. It's literally a plug and play system other than running a wire to the ground and a wire to a controller or to a power button or power source. Everything else is plug and play. 3M tape, completely reversible. Uh, pumps high quality. Again, the fittings are high quality. Everything that comes with the kit is perfect for this uh, you know, kind of setup or application. And it's really a take your bumper off and spend a day and you'll have it completely done. Then you're you know, once you're connected to a controller and you're on the road, you can be enjoying better or cooler IATs with or without water methanol injection. Um, I'll have a lot of those photos that I showed earlier in a uh, higher quality resolution on my Instagram page uh, over a, uh, a few days or a week or two. Um, so Instagram is uh, at because hide 16. So just hop on there. You can see more of the photos, ask que questions, and I'll post up some more videos. And then once I get this on the road, uh, I can get either some more videos or <clears throat> I can get some uh, data logs when the weather turns from uh, 30 degrees here in New Jersey to some actual warm temperatures again where I'm going to need this system. So, all right, guys, take care.